Hey YouTube, Natural Prepper here, and I have Bob on the phone. Um, Bob is the one that I mentioned to you that contacted me whenever um, he saw our video about Dave the vet having his problems with the psychic evaluation and losing his gun rights. And Bob messaged me through YouTube and said he also has a similar story to tell, and he is active duty. So. Bob, if you'd like to tell everybody uh, what what went through your mind whenever you heard about Dave's story. Uh, well, I was uh, wounded in Afghanistan back in 2010, and I've been going to deployment health on uh, Camp Lejeune, um, and they have uh, that's where they have their therapists and psychiatrists. And about a month, month and a half ago. When I went in for an appointment, they had a piece of paper sitting there that you have to fill out before you go back now. And on the piece of paper, it asked uh, uh, a series of questions uh, about if you, uh, you know, want to, you feel like harming other people, if you want to harm yourself, uh, how much you drink, um, if you wake up and feel like you need to have a drink in the morning. Uh, a lot of a lot of questions like that on it, and then at the bottom it asked if you own any weapon, and uh, you know I just circled no for all of it. And when I got back to talk to my therapist, I asked her, you know, what was that all about? You know, we never done that before, and uh, she said that with all the school shootings that have happened uh, and the new Obamacare rules that have gone through. They want all the therapists and psychiatrists to have uh, everybody that comes in to see them fill it out. And if you answer yes to any of the questions that have to do with firearms, uh, if you feel like you're a threat, or if you state any type of violent thought to them, that they are supposed to send your name up to the VA and do the instant criminal background check system. and. They will add your name to the list of people who can't own a firearm, and you'll get a letter in the mail 30 days later uh, stating that they are adding your name to the list, and you have 30 days to appeal it, and you need to, uh, it's pretty much almost like a hearing, and you need to bring people, uh, preferably like a, a therapist or a psychiatrist, a doctor, and people to vouch on your behalf that you are capable of owning a firearm. And if you can't prove it to them, your name goes on that list as well as anyone else who lives in your home, and you'll never be able to own a firearm again. Um, and if you do not relinquish your firearms, they will send police out to take them from you. Um, and this, all of this has to boil down with Obamacare. And the, there's been a lot of laws like this on the book since, uh, I think it was 1986, but they've never really been enforced. They're being enforced now, and it's a huge push to disarm veterans. Uh, my personally, my therapist said she doesn't agree with it, and she's not going to comply because it's not her right to say who can and can't own a firearm. Now, if someone came in and she felt honestly that they were going to hurt themselves or hurt somebody else, she would do something about it. Right. But majority of people who come in who may drink a little bit or are having night terrors or having, uh, you know, flashbacks are not a threat to anybody else. And she doesn't feel that they should have their guns taken away. And a lot of guys who you know, have been injured, you know, have their legs blown off, have their arm, an arm blown off, or have been injured, you know, have some type of spinal cord injury, their firearm is probably the only thing that makes them feel safe. And uh, taking that away from them will only do more harm. I mean, you already have been knocked down a lot of notches when you're injured, and you know bad things happen. And uh, a lot of times, you know, these guys, you know, the only way they're able to sleep at night is knowing that they're able to protect themselves. And it's a shame that these things are happening. And well, for the most part, they have so much control of the government now that once. They get to that point where they're trying to take your firearms. There's not a lot you can do to stop them because a lot of doctors and most doctors aren't going to go out on a limb for you because, you know, they put themselves on the line if you do accidentally do something because they vouch for you. So they just won't help you. Um, 
And so you think this all kicked off with the Obamacare initiative. I mean, do you think this started like in the last 12 months or six months or? It's probably been, I would say that I started noticing a change, uh, a big change about a month and a half ago, but I think this has been in the works for a while. It seems that there's a big push right now to disarm military and veterans. And, uh, you know, I, re I really don't know what to say about it because the government's going to do what they want to do regardless if it's legal. And uh, part of this Obamacare thing that's gone through is to allow, uh, legally, your medical record is, you know, has to be guarded. You know, they can't just share it with their friends. And he's trying to change those rules so that they can share your medical records with the government. They're definitely actively trying to get that if they haven't already gotten it pushed through somehow or another. What do you think the, uh, wh what's your philosophy on the reasoning for all of this? Um, I think it, the reasoning behind it is the government, with everything that's going on right now in our country, with the, the debt the way it is, um, the fact that the dollar is becoming solvent, um, you know, a dollar just doesn't buy that much anymore. And uh, with the, the, the amount of disparity between the rich and the poor, that uh, they know that if, if something, that, that the government decides to do something that illegal, constitutionally illegal, um, that I don't think the majority of veterans are going to go along with it. And the only way for them to do these things that they have planned is to get the guns out of the we got to use them hand. You know, if you had a, a couple hundred veterans that were armed and together, uh, that'd be a formidable force. And uh, it would be pretty difficult for, you know, the military or DHS to do anything about it. And uh, the only way for them to enact these policies that are illegal and go against our rights uh, is to get the weapons out of our hands. Uh, and I think that's what the push is, is for right now. They know something big is going to happen. And uh, they know that, realistically, the, the veterans in our active duty are the ones who can, who can make the stop if they have it. You know, you figure well, the Marine Corps has like 280,000 Marines. And, uh, you know, if even a half of them didn't go along with it and picked up arms, and then you got how many million in the Army... You know, there's no force besides us that they wouldn't even be able to do anything. You know, they need us. But uh, they definitely don't want us armed. And it, it shows with the policies that are being pushed through and, the, you know, the statements and that are coming out from the Department of Homeland Security. You know, we, to them, we are the threat. You know, what happened to your friend Dave? It is a shame because he went in and called about a back injury and they wanted him to do a psyche valve. And I think that's another big push that they're doing um, to veterans because if they can label label him as something, um, you know, right now you, you can have PTS, PTSD and own a weapon. Uh, but I definitely believe that in the future, probably this year, they're going to push towards uh, banning people with PTSD from owning guns. Now, you're, you being active military still, and then seeing, um, seeing this attack on active military and uh, vets with their gun rights, you know, has it, have you seen activity that's led you to think that anything is going on beyond that, or that they're getting ready for, or? Um, I, I absolutely believe that uh, that there are uh, training and preparing the military. They think that the military is going to be their gopher and go out and do this when they decide to declare martial law. Uh, I think it's a miscalculation on their part. Uh, I, I believe that the majority of us are just going to leave and go home because, you know, I don't think that American people realize what happens when you declare an area a war zone? Because that's what it's going to be. Um, and that's why the pol you have a lot of police departments saying, look, well, we're not going to do that. Right. We're not going to confiscate guns because they know what happens. 
people are going to die. You know, uh, I, I know many people who are not going to turn their guns in. They're not going to register their guns. And, uh, you know, even when they had that uh, registration going on in New York, uh, there was a lot of signs that uh, at these town hall meetings that people weren't going to comply. You know, and those cops, they know, like, look, there's a lot of guns out there. And uh, people know their rights, and they're not just going to, the majority of people aren't just going to hand their guns over. No, I, I, think I, I hope Obama not. Obama wanted, you know, he had said during his campaign speech that he wanted to build a domestic police force that was comparable to the military. And uh, and I think that uh, that's why DHS is growing so big. It has, they've given them officer status now. So, you know, and, you know, all these stories you hear about foreign troops training here, mm-hmm. the U.N., you know, that stuff could be real. And then that way the U.S. government can wash their hands and say, well, it's not us killing Americans, you know? Right. Well, I, I kind of have a big theory about that. I um, put it out there on video the other day. Um, I think that uh, the elitist, the bankers, uh, the world banks, um, are purposefully about to crash our economy. I read a paper that was written between the FDIC and the Bank of England, and it was published in December of 2012, so just a couple months ago, laying out the strategic plan for the big banks to survive sort of this collapse that uh, is imminent. And we all know anybody that's got half a brain that can look at uh, what's going on in the world with with the world's economy and then versus the countries that are dumping usage of the U.S. dollar and, uh, you know, just no longer wanting to deal with our money. It seems to me whenever I put all these pieces together that I feel like DHS is preparing for that economic collapse to happen and therefore being able to use that as the reason to declare martial law and in my theory I feel like they're trying to disarm as many people as possible now prior to that happening um, and I, I just think it's all this big tied in thing and, and I think the United Nations with the small arms treaty is even a part of that where if our government can't pull off uh, disarming everybody, then the UN can come in and do it. I could be yeah, wrong. You're absolutely, probably right. And uh, you know, and I was actually going through some of the executive orders that Obama had signed, and one of them was uh, to get the U.S. Uh, government in line with UN resolution. And I just found that out today. It was one of those ones that uh, you know. Your trusty mainstream news uh, decided not to report. You know, I didn't know about it, and I was just going through on the White House page, and here's one of them. One of his executive orders was to uh, pretty much get rid of our Constitution and allow the UN to start making rules and laws that govern us. Did you? Is this one of them that you sent a copy to me on? I did not. I just found it today. Wow. Winston, you brought that up, um, and I can send you a link to it. They're most definitely preparing for something. And uh, something that should really, you know, should really concern people is, you know, I'm in the military, and uh, DHS has purchased more ammunition than we have in the military. Yeah, I know a lot of people have heard the numbers of those ammo purchases, but when when you put it in that context, that even puts a bigger light on it. Like, we all know that's a hell of a lot of hollow point ammo. But when you when you actually state the fact that Homeland Security has more ammo than our military has, which is fighting worldwide, that's that's a pretty powerful thought right there. It is, and people don't realize that they purchased those orders, those billions around. I think it's up to around eleven billion now. Is more than what we have. Um, and the, and, the, and the fact is, is that. We aren't allowed to use hollow points in the military. It's against the rules of engagement. It's banned by NATO. Really? Yes, because hollow points. Uh, hollow points are designed for two purposes. They're designed. Uh, desi- uh, sorry. <laughs> They're designed to 
not cause collateral damage. So if you shoot somebody, the bullet doesn't blast right through them and hit the next guy. Right. Um, that's what the hollow point does. It hits the body, um, and your body's made of mostly water. So the water actually goes into that cavity, causes like a hydroshock, blows the bullet down so it doesn't flow right through you. Um, but it also flattens out and and does a lot more internal damage, and you almost always die with any type of body shot. Where um, you know, a ball round is still very dangerous, but it usually will punch right through. It doesn't maim and tear you to shreds inside. Um, right. So that's why they're banned, because of the amount of damage they do. And you can lay there and suffer for hours and not die, you know? I, when, so, so when you're, like, over in Afghanistan, you're not even using hollow points whenever you're on no, the battlefield? No, you can't. It's a war crime. But yeah, we can have them on Homeland Security's time. That's, I mean, that it just makes no sense. The stuff the dude isn't telling you that this is banned by the international community because of the damage it does, but it's okay for America. It's okay for them to use it on us. You know, and the fact that, I know, I'm sure you saw the those new targets they were ordering with pregnant kids, a yep. pregnant girl a child, uh, you know, a grandfather, you know, well, why are they practicing shooting at targets that look like everyday Americans? What, uh, I mean, uh, what? How could you shoot a pregnant woman, even if she did have a gun pointed at you? You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm not learning the military. There's a reason why we practice on targets that look like humans. It, uh, and, you know, it, the reason that we do that is because uh, in previous wars, even in Vietnam, uh, and actually, well, it actually was World War II. They were firing so many bullets with no hits because they had trained shooting at circles and things like that. And when the guys actually had to kill other people, their minds weren't desensitized to do that, and they weren't able to do it. So they'd just shoot over the heads of the combatants. So they they changed all of the training across the forces, and that's why you shoot at targets that look like people now, because if you do it enough. When you actually shoot at a person, your mind's desensitized and it's just a piece of paper. Right. You know what I mean? And that's why that's why they're doing what they're doing. Because you need to do that so you get to the point where you don't think, you just pull the trigger. Out in California, we have Segway targets that are designed, they look like people in their program, they're actual Segways. And they drive around and when you shoot them, they fall to the ground like they've been hit. Wow. They have a range out there, so that way it's as realistic as possible. And these, these segways are programmed to drive and take cover behind walls and then jump out and run real quick to another wall. So they make it as realistic as possible. And that's what I don't understand. Uh, you know, Homeland Security is... If we were if we were in one uh, the type of country where we were having restaurants blown up by, you know suicide bombers or or I don't know if if we had some similar incidences as what we've seen in other countries I could almost comprehend the need to have a homeland security force perhaps uh, since we're not supposedly supposed to have military action within the borders but I see those as isolated incidences I, I it doesn't make sense to have this much ammo this many targets. Um, the tanks, they own, they've, they just purchased 2,700 mine resistant tanks. Um, you I don't know. think people realize how effective those things are. Like, your rifle you have, your shotgun, is not going to do anything to that. I could shoot it all day, I would never punch a hole through one of them. You can't stop them. And they have, a lot of people know that those MRAPs, mine resistant ambush protected vehicles, yeah. have 900 pounds of torque and 1,000 horsepower. Wow. Well, you know, again, what what is uh, Homeland Security? Once they start moving, I have a license to drive one. I, I have a license for NATVs and MRAPs. And I'm telling you, there's no stopping that vehicle. And that is not something that should be used on American soil. Maybe a light, uh, uh, you know, SWAT team, something could use that, but it sh 
it's not something that your everyday police forces should have, be able to use. Right. That you know, it, if you look at it, the writing's on the wall. They are arming to do something to us. Mm. Like, I'm telling you, they don't want us to have ammo. And you know, all the people who are smart enough to stock up before this happens are reaping the benefits right now, and everyone else is playing catch up. Sorry, the movie theater shooting happened. Mm -hmm. And then the school shooting, you know, with all those things happening, of course people are going to rush out and buy ammo. I mean, they've sold more guns, I think, in one month than they do in a year. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that part kind of backfired in their face. Uh, I think that while they were doing all this talk about uh, banning weapons, that we recruited a lot of new people to our cause. Who were like, wait a minute, that's our right. You know, maybe I should go buy a gun so that way I have that right. I can exercise it if I want to. Yeah. You know, and a lot. I think a lot of new people went out and bought guns, which is good. It's a good thing. Um, you know, and I, and I think that they're realizing that all their propaganda and lies aren't working. So I expect something else is probably going to happen. You know, they, they they have to keep it fresh in our minds. You know, mm -hmm. they got. They have to, you know, bring their liberals and their anti-gun people, you know, they need to consolidate them. So they need something big else is going to happen, and, you know. And that's scary because if people really think that the government wouldn't stage a false flag attack to get their way, then you're living in a delusion. Yeah. Because they would, and they will. And they have. Yeah. And about. And, uh, you know what I mean? And that's the truth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is. The and, you know, it's almost like uh, once, you're, once you have a little bit of uh, enlightenment about some of it, it's almost like an obligation to try and tell somebody something. Yeah, it's like the Matrix. You got a choice to take the red pill or the blue pill. And, you know, we took the red pill, and sometimes you're like, man, I should have just took the blue pill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish I wish I was asleep. I wish I was asleep. That that was one of those videos that uh, on that channel that where you were you were joking about how they put the um, face masks on because of the yeah. facial recognition. Yeah, they got the two of them did a a video on that about. Okay, I'm. I want to go back to sleep now. I'm just going back to sleep. La di da di da. I'm gonna go shopping at Walmart now. <laughs> Because it, it almost sucks knowing it all. It does, because, the more, you know, you go down the rabbit hole so deep that you're just like, holy, you know, you can, it, it, you almost have to say, hey, I'm not going to let this consume my mind because there's this so much. And, you know, I think a lot of what bothers me is the fact that how many people who don't know or would rather just not know and just go on. And then, you know, those are the ones you have to worry about because one when things take the turn for the worse, you know, and if we have a situation without rule of law or shit is the fan or a martial law situation, you know, you know, they're going to get hauled off or they're going to die or they're going to be coming to you, you know, when you support them when you've been telling them all along. That's, that's what I expect. I expect a few of those must, yeah. You know. uh, I, I, you know, and it worries me, you know, because... The information's there, you can show it to them, they can 